It's about 610, headed up through Middlebury, get up to the Appalachian Gap. Weather looks a little mixed today. It's got the sun's trying to come out, but there's a little bit of clouds everywhere. It's a little chilly. I made a big decision on this trip. I decided uh, not to bring my tent. Instead, I brought a wool sweater, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I plan on staying in the shelters. Uh, oh, gotta do my little driving thing here. Yeah, so I made a uh, decision to not bring my tent this time, and I've been staying in the shelters right along, and I'm, you know, I'm usually shot by about four o'clock, so I, I usually have first pick in the shelter. I'm usually one of the first ones there. It's been cold out lately. It was 40 like a week and a half ago. Um, it's been real cold, so I decided to bring a little sweater. And also that lightens up my pack. My tent weighs three and a half pounds. So I'm, I'm weighed out at 21 and a half pounds, fully loaded with two liters of water. So that's a pretty good weight because it'll just go down from there. And I've got a long climb going up Camel's Hump and I've got some tricky technical stuff going down the south side of Camel's Hump and uh, the latter ravine section. So I thought having the lighter weight would be beneficial in that regard. So um, we'll see how it works out for me, but it has been really cold lately. So the wool sweater, I think, smart idea. So we'll see how it goes. Just turned on to 17 and go up through Bristol park at the app gap the crest of the gap getting starting to get like goosebumps a little bit because it's getting closer and closer seeing a few drops of rain um, not a great sign going over camel's hump so we'll see how it goes if the weather turns bad on me I, I suppose I could always bypass the peak and uh, go back and do it another time um, We'll see. I could play that by ear. I, it's not. It's not like I haven't done Camel's Hump before. I've. I've done it uh, when I was a kid, and I did it a couple years ago. So I've been up there a few times. But uh, I'm not going over the peak in the rain. But we'll see what happens. It's just small drops. Doesn't look like it's gonna let loose. All right. Say hi, Mary. It's my friend, Mary. All right, so here's where I park. This is the top of the Appalachian Gap. And <clears throat> there's my little Yaris. I, uh, I hope no one has any interest in a 230,000 mile Yaris. It's been a little banged up. There's nothing in it. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, broke into. I don't think it will. Got Vermont plates on it. I think we'll be okay. So anyway, it's a little cold out. Definitely a little foggy. A little stiff breeze. But here we go. Our... Hey, what's going on? Here we are at the. Uh... It's my friend Mary getting ready. It's starting to rain a little bit. Just my luck. I'm headed out. Long hike over Camel's Hump, and it started to rain just a little bit. But uh, it's just about eight o'clock. We're here at the Duxbury Road parking lot and uh, getting geared up, ready to go. All right, here we are, all geared up, ready to go. Headed out on the trail. So uh, stay tuned. Hey, what's going on? This is uh, Bamforth Ridge Shelter right here. It's about two tenths of a mile down off the long trail. We came down to have a little snack and refreshment. Take a break for a sec. It's about halfway up to the hump. I got about five and a half, six, five point six miles left to go to where I'm staying tonight, and about three and a half up to the peak of Camel's Hump. So we're off and running. Hey, what's going on? This is Camel's Hump in the clouds right here. Uh, it's a cool little section. Nice views. I just left my friend Mary. She just turned around at the four mile mark. So I got about four and a half, five miles to go to get to Glen Ellen where I'm staying tonight. Um, 
I'm in pretty good shape, so it should be all right. It's a hell of a climb now. It's steep, I'm getting tired. All right, out. What's up? So here I am, stopping for lunch. Camel's Hump is right there, right behind me. This little thing. Um, I uh, the second I stopped, I had to take my shirt off, dry the sweat. I put this little lightweight sweater on with the windbreaker because it's it's pretty chilly and cold out here. You get quick real quick. So the sweater was a fantastic idea. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about getting a spot in the shelter because I haven't seen anybody out here at all. So we'll see. But I stopped here for lunch. My legs are starting to cramp. So I've got five miles of climbing in so far. I think about a mile and a half up to the top of Camel's Hump up there. So I figured I'd stop on the nice rock ledge right here. It's nice and warm. Have my lunch. Check out the view. So here's the view where I'm having lunch. Lake Champlain right out there. Lake Champlain, and then I'm headed, headed up there after lunch, right over there, Camel's Hump. All right. What is for lunch today? We're gonna have a chicken creation and some chips and combos and some. Sour Patch Watermelons for dessert, and then I got a cup of Pedialyte. So, got my protein, got my simple carbs, my electrolytes. So that's what's for lunch today. Oh, here it is. Like Champagne of the East. Lots of Mansfield right over there on the other side of that laker. climb six 6.2 miles it took me six hours I'm exhausted my legs are legs are shot I've got to go down this section here, which I'm a little bit nervous about um, but I'm staying at a shelter it's about two about an hour and a half from here two miles um, there's a caretaker at it so I got some advice on getting down there so it should be good and it'll be a gorgeous day Wish me luck. Hey, what's going on? Um, well, I did it. I made it over Camel's Hump, and it was not for the faint of heart. It was uh, that was a pretty rough descent. I, I wouldn't want to have to climb back up that. Uh, past a bunch of people that were doing it though, and the, the caretaker here. This is the Cooley Glen cabin here. Uh, the caretaker here does this every day, two miles from here up to the Camel's Hump. Ugh. No, thank you. Um, yeah, here I am. I did 8.2 miles today. Uh, it took me all day. Uh, I'm hurting. Um, but it's over. I got Camel's Hump out of the way. So done. Good deal. Happy with that. Um, that's it. I'm going to get some food and hydrate. Morning. What's going on? 
I'm sitting having breakfast here at, uh, it's not Cooley Glen, I got that wrong. It's uh, Montclair Glen Shelter, Montclair Shelter. Um, it's about 8.15. I'm gonna try to get out of here by nine. I've got five miles to go today through Ladder Ravine over um, Ethan Allen, Ira Allen, and Burnt Rock. I hear it's pretty technical, tricky going, but it's only five miles. I climbed uh, 4,154 feet yesterday, which is a personal best for me. Um, so it can't be, it can't be worse than that. So yesterday was yesterday was a long day. We'll see how it goes today. All right, I'm leaving uh, Montclair Glen Shelter, and uh, I just wrote in the logbook. I wrote, um, "Wake up to find out that you're the eyes of the world." It's you know line from uh, Eyes of the World by Grateful Dead, and it's kind of my calling card thing. I, I kind of leave it everywhere. And I just put on the Grateful Dead station on Sirius, I put some tunes on, and guess what comes on? Eyes of the World. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a good day. This is Ethan Allen, headed up Ethan Allen right now, and Ira Allen, and Burnt Rock. Well, here I am, top of Ethan Allen, Mount Ethan Allen. Got this sweet view behind me here. Took me 45 minutes to climb up 900 feet from Montclair. Um, oh, beautiful. Time for water break. I was a little nervous this morning. The weather looked a little iffy, but right now it's pretty nice hiking weather. And uh, rain's coming this afternoon, so hopefully I'll get to uh, Cowles Cove, cave, whatever it is, shelter. Woo! All right, time to hydrate. Well, here I am in Ladder Ravine, and there it is. There's the ladder. I was so nervous about this section. I'm not a big fan of ladders, and... The way people make it sound, they make it sound like it's this awful, awful section. I, a dog would have a hard time going up and down at a good sized dog, but um, that's not so bad. I think I can handle this. <laughs> oh, it's turning into a beautiful day. It's absolutely gorgeous out right now. Sweet little ravine spot here. And that's the ladder right there. I guess that's the one ladder. Glad to get it over with. So I, I keep fretting about these different sections that people get a little overhyped about. and They end up not being that bad. Of course, I'll probably fall off this now that I've said that. We'll see. Oh, I'm still alive. I made it over the ladder. And I'm up here on this. I'm not sure where I am up here, but nice rock kind of ledge outcrop. Gorgeous view. This is... Uh, this is the stuff I came over over here. So, pretty good progress. So this is Burnt Rock Mountain. I'm on, on Burnt Rock Mountain, and I just broke 100 miles. Not this trip, mind you, but in total, I've, I've uh, just logged 100 miles on the long trail. So, 172 left to go, uh, chipping away. Now here's the other little section that people warned me about. It's, uh, Good little climb up. There's a little like uh, rope cable thing to go up, but I'm going up, so should be all right as long as you don't look down. Just go and get up. But I think after I get over this, I'm going all the way down to Cowles Cove or Cave or whatever shelter that I'm staying tonight. So, all right. Whew. That was sketchy. This came up. It was like right here. Whew. I don't like that stuff. But uh, nice view of Camel's Hump. 
the background here. Pretty sweet. Popping up. It's this one right here in the far, far ground. Woo! Technical day today. This is this is still going. You gotta be careful. But I'm pretty sure it's all downhill to the shelter now, so. Woo! Well, here's Howell's Cove shelter. Home for the night. It's privy. Privy's right down over there. Can't really see it through the woods, but it's down there. Not much of a stream for water, but there's running water. And this will be, this will be. Well, here I am at Cow's Cove for the night. Right here, there's my bed for the night. And then I got five miles to the car tomorrow. I'm exhausted. That was a very technical, mentally exhausting, physically exhausting little five mile stretch there over Bird Mountain. I'm not a big fan of the high exposure stuff on the rock scrambles. Um, I don't like it. But it's over with, so. Alrighty. So I'm sitting here reading this uh, information bulletin and uh, the intention, the next five miles north of Montclair can take four to five hours, ain't that the truth? Please make sure you have adequate daylight. Burnt rock is extremely dangerous when wet. I would not want to be going through that burnt rock section in, in the rain. And there were a couple guys that were just here that just headed out to uh, head over that section to where I was last night. And uh, it's supposed to rain in a couple hours, so I wish them well. Um, but, yep, you know, there's my spot for the night right there. That's where I'm at. Yep. All right, so I'm headed out to Cowell's Cove. It's about, uh, I don't know, it's about 8.30, maybe 8.45, five and a half miles, going over uh, Baby Stark, Molly Stark. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to go uh, about three miles down to uh, Cooley Glen Shelter, have a little bite to eat down there before I have my last climb of this, this venture. So... Here we go.
Well, looks like it's empty. This is Oh well, I guess we have fireplaces all over. Cooley Glen. And have a break here. Sweet. Oh, this place. Let's see. In memory of Mark Von Trapp. Hmm. This Birch, Birch Glen. Did I say Cooley Glen? I said Cooley Glen. This is Birch Glen. My bad. This has been here for quite some time. for a bite to eat before my last uh This is the top of uh, um, Molly Stark balcony, Molly Stark, whatever. I know why they call it balcony too, because it's basically a 600 foot stair climb. Pretty sweet though. There's Camel's Hump. Right there, came over that south face, down that ridge, to right here. A mile and a half left. A little cold up here. I'm not gonna stay long. Uh, I'm up here on top of uh, Molly Stark's balcony. Sweet view is a big steep cliff right, right here, right there. Camel's hump in the background. I don't know if you could tell with the light, but I got a mile and a half left to go to the car. It's a nice easy walk so far this morning till this climb, but it's all downhill from here. Whoo! So far so good. There's Mad River Glen, almost back to the car. It's right down in the valley. I can hear the road, see a roof down there. So, almost the end of the day. Mad River Glen, no, that's what I'm headed up over next. Yeah, hear the traffic, yeah, yahoo. There it is, 17. This is it.
There she is. Oh, yeah. Woo, I made it. Bring it on home. The car's there. Windshield's intact. Looking good. Woo, what a trip. Three days, two nights. I went from Duxbury Road to here, 18 miles. I did 4,154 foot vertical climb. That's a lifetime best for me, first day. And then two five mile sections. The Ethan Allen, Iron Allen, Burnt Rock section, super technical. So that was just a one day thing. But uh, yeah, here we go. So when I, uh, when I start back up in two weeks, this will be, uh, this will be where I'll start, headed up over Mad River Glen. And then here's the app gap, Route 17. Cool, little spot. And I came down, right down over there, so. Yeehaw.